Hi guys, this is Simeon from Swedish Homestead. This is a Q&A. Um, people have asked a bunch of questions throughout the last few weeks in the videos. I want to try to respond to some of them. It's uh, sometimes hard to do that in the comment section, so here we go. You know, there's so much information to share about this channel, our homestead, our farm, our families, our background, our visions, and every video gives you a little glimpse of that entire um, everything. <laughs> and you know, we try to post the video six days of the week, and um, we won't be able to to um, post all the questions right away. But um, I hope that you guys appreciate the dialogue that I have with you, how we open up and allow you guys to be part of our lives like this. And um, it's a challenge for us, and it's also a blessing for us. So we open up, and and we are aware that. There is a lot of a lot of positive feedback from you guys, and there's also some critical feedback, which is good to make progress and to learn. Um, but you know, sometimes you guys have to wait to get your answer. Sometimes um, you, you will just be able to follow the whole process. But one thing that's on my heart before I start answering some questions is that you know, every video that we post, it tries to deal with the subject that's in the video title and it is very hard to capture our entire process our entire way of doing things with the animals and what we think in a few frames of HD video in a few minutes it's very hard so um, often there are comments of people saying things that are just conclusions from maybe something you saw in that shot and um, you know, that is not always the case that, that those conclusions are right. And I try to respond to those comments and try to show the whole entire process, but sometimes it just takes time for us to come out with another bit of information. So when we did these milling videos, some people asked, what do you guys do um, with the waste? What do you mill? The length of the lumber and stuff. And for us it's really important that we produce as little waste as possible and that we take advantage of everything. We just live in a culture and in a society that throws away so much and um, you know there's no such place as away. <laughs> so so um, here on the farm we when we mill we really take advantage of everything. When we cut down the trees either um, the branches go back into the forest to build soil and bring the nutrition there or we chip them up we use that to build soil either through a deep bedding and compost or as a covering in the garden then when we mill we get sawdust um, the sawdust we also use for deep bedding so or, or covering at times so that's uh, not at all wasted it's a very very precious product most of the time we have too little wood chips too little sawdust too little wood shavings then we have this pile of bark and that as well we either chip so that's what the chickens walk on in the greenhouse they walk on um, chipped barks from the sawmill or the big pieces we cut up and we burn them we heat all of our houses with this renewable source um, of energy so we have no waste there whatsoever then um, we mill um, pretty much the best thing you can do is to know what you're going to build and then to choose the boards and the beams and to mill according to that. And so we, we do most framing uh, lumber, um, 45 millimeters and then depending on the width. And if we don't know what we're going to build, we try to mill as wide as possible. But the best thing is really to know the length and already cut that in the forest and to know for what you need it and then then when you have the locks for that you mark them and then you mill it that's the least waste but um, that's what we try to do when we know have a building project otherwise we will cut them in standard length 
which the longest in Sweden is 5.5 meters and then it goes down in 30 centimeter steps. So um, that's what we do. Most of the construction lumber here is uh, spruce and we have milled some birch trees before. Um, we have made some flooring from birch trees here on the farm that we milled, then we planed them and molded them. And uh, my brother's house, for example, has part of the house is birch, birch flooring. So, um, yeah, we, have, we mill some aspen and we make sauna paneling for that because aspen doesn't get as hot. So you don't burn your buns when you go into the sauna. Um, we have milled some ash. I actually need to build a couple handles for a shovel. So I need to bring in some ash, um, thick boards from ash and dry them so I can uh, kind of do that. Do we have a um, dryer for our wood to get it down to the right uh, moisture level so we can build furniture? No, we haven't had that yet, but my dad just bought that drying element of it and um, they started to build a dryer for the lumber. So that's exciting. I want to show that in the future for you guys as well. I thought I could also share a few questions um, about other things. I'm sitting here by the sawmill, but some people ask, are we going to keep the cows? Yes, we are going to keep the cows. Um, we want to buy a bull when we have the money. Guys, this channel is real. Um, we are not rich. We try to make this homestead work. And the reason why we don't have a bull is because we haven't had money for a bull yet. Prices for livestock are right now very high here in Sweden. And we want to get the right bull and it's a bummer, big bummer, but we'll have to see. For me, the priority is right now on getting the butcher shop done and the chickens because the return of money is much better for me. And the, the beef, I would have to wait a couple of years till I can slaughter the first calves. So we are gonna keep the cows, we're gonna increase that. The poultry will also increase our pa um, the quality of our pastures tremendously, uh, tremendously <laughs> because um, of the manure they're gonna spread and that'll make for a better grass-fed beef operation later. Um, so, so we are gonna keep the cows. If, the reason why we got Highland cattle now is because they are simple for us to keep now in the winter. They finish well on grass only, and they were the cheapest. They were much cheaper. They were not as much affected by this high beef price right now. Um, we do a non-dig gardening method. Some people have commented about that. It, I never use the word permaculture much. I don't know why I don't do that, but that's pretty much our attempt. No dig and permaculture. We don't plow fields and stuff. Yeah, there were a lot of questions about our pastures, how to increase them, how to sow um, stuff in it. That, that is not really our attempt. That's what I learned in farming. That's what I did. But our attempt is um, to instead copy nature and and herbivores have always eaten a huge variety of different kind of, um, of, of plants and species. And by uh, mob grazing and controlled pastured management, both with beef and with poultry, we will be able to increase um, the quality of the pastures very quickly. I showed you some footage in the video, uh, key line design and pasture management. You can see it right here. I showed you some footage of just mossy um, pastures here and Richard Perkins and Richdale Permaculture. Um, I will link um, that channel here as well, right here actually. And he has in three seasons gone from moss to the most productive pastures in the village. So that's quite impressive. So that is where we are coming from on that side. Now, you hear me talk a lot, I wanna test that, I wanna test that, and the, somebody said I have a mighty long list of things I want to experiment with. That's true, because we are in a constant state of developing and testing and seeing for ourselves what works the best and see where we can b get better and more efficient. And, and the whole pl plan with permaculture is we wanna let nature do the work for us. We want to have the pigs till for us. We wanna have the chickens till for us. We don't wanna use a machine for that. We wanna have the chickens scratch out the manure so we don't have to drive with a tractor over that. And there are amazing farms in the world. I would say top of the list is Polyface Farms in, in Shenandoah Valley in Virginia that does this and models this perfectly.
now I'm in the workshop. <laughs> My camera died in the middle of the q and I had no idea I continued the whole talking. Then I realized my camera died, it was too cold outside. That reminds me of some questions people ask, what camera do you film on? Um, when we started this channel, we started with zero budget, you know, and um, the only reason why I said let's give it a try is because we had the computer and we had our smartphones, our iPhones, and thought we can shoot some video. So I shoot all of the videos on the iPhone 6s and um, it is very sensitive to wind noise that's as soon as there's a little breeze you hear that and I need to get an external microphone so that will be the first investment in that then the biggest struggle is the cold temperatures that it dies very quickly I've uh, I'm, I'm working on different solutions there as well and some of you have commented on that but yeah we film everything with the iPhone and um, I have increased the, the pixels, the quality, now we film in full HD and 60 frames per second so that's why the picture is clearer and not so shaky and we're also using a different app to stabilize the video so it's not so shaky so that's why the latest videos have been a little smoother. So I hope you enjoy that. Anyway, I was talking about um, what I will focus on right now here on the farm, it's the first year and, and I'm really focusing on the um, on the layers, the egg production and the pasture poultry um, because there's such a quick return of money there. The the pasture poultry it's different than, than free range chickens because they are in pasture poultry pens called chicken tractors that are moved daily. I have a video, I'll link it right here, where I show how they look and how they get moved and here now in spring um, or very soon here I will start building more of those. We have three of those and did a test run with them this past season and we will build more to raise more birds in them. Each shelter uh, has room for about 70 chickens. So that's it. I won't be able to pack more information in this Q&A. If you have any thoughts um, on this, some further questions, then please leave the uh, leave a comment below, we'll try to answer. I want to thank you for watching this and um, hope you enjoy just being part of this channel. It's growing very quickly, it has done this. It's amazing to think that we are only three months old and um, it's truly a blessing. So um, I'm excited for, for the season and I hope you are too. We'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.